We're back with the Guy Dawson Show at the World Center of Broadcast Media, WCOBM.com. And, of course, you who are out there watching the show live know that you can go to WCOBM.com uh, to watch us. We also have archives of the show. Uh, we have a, a YouTube page for the Guy Dawson Show, and we encourage all of you to go and subscribe to uh, the Guy Dawson Show YouTube page. You can go over there and binge watch our show. We have three, well, two and a half years worth of episodes that are sitting there, all types of interviews, and I think you'll really enjoy uh, the YouTube page. You can also go to the WCOBM Facebook page, which airs the show live, and uh, we have uh, more archives on a special page for the Guy Dawson Show through WCOBM.com. So there's lots of opportunities out there uh, to check out our show, and uh, we always appreciate our viewers, and again, if you would go over and sponsor the Guy Dawson Dawson Show or subscribe to The Guy Dawson Show uh, on our YouTube page. We really appreciate it. And I've been speaking with Mackenzie White. She is a good friend of mine and she is a health and wellness coach and, and a woman who empowers other women in, uh, in a lot of ways. And how did you get into the empowerment of other women and yourself, of course? When I was 17 years old, I had a best friend who was a couple years older than me. We were a dynamic duo, the blonde hair, little Trixies that would run around and get into trouble. And we both recognized that a lot of girls were were mean to one another and dirty looks. We'd, you know, be excited walking through the mall and people would just be like, what is like looking at us like something was wrong with us and we were just happy. So we're at breakfast and she and I are start talking we're like you know this needs to change it's ridiculous these girls are always giving one another mean looks and and being intimidating towards one another and we're done with that so what what can we do so we started brainstorming her and I had been attending Reiki circles we talked about Reiki earlier and Reiki circles basically would be a bunch of people that would gather in a circle and there would be a leader and she would start the conversation and lead us through a meditation and then all the Reiki practitioners would go around and give healings to the people in the circle. So that's where my friend and I actually had met. And at this time when we were at breakfast, that Reiki circle had already been, it already ended. There was just some stuff happened financially and it closed down and so our friends that all went to those events were just spread out and it was her and I really so we figured our target would be women and we thought you know we should host a circle targeting empowering each other and creating a sisterhood so that's what we did and we brainstormed for a couple months found a location and made it happen and what was the response how did you attract women to to join your sisterhood my friend Aaron and I have a large social media following and both of us started talking about what we were planning on doing months before our first circle and people were interested. You know, they were skeptical of course, but when the plans started to manifest and the time got closer, 40 girls came to our first event and it was blew us both away and we knew it was a part of our calling. What do you do at the events? Different themes at each one. Recently, we had a yoga workshop. So, I, Aaron, my friend who started the circles with me, moved to New York City, and I now host them by myself. But I will bring on different guests because I think it's important to have you know different women from all walks of life come there and bring what they know and their passions. So this woman specifically does Kundalini yoga to the T. Loves Kundalini, and Kundalini is the feminine energy that's in everyone's spine. But we are. The premise of the event was to do a yoga workshop on increasing the kundalini flow. So that, it was fantastic and she led us through a kriya which is a pranayama breathing technique and we talked about how to go into the world with the energy that you build up when you're doing these practices and how to give that to others without giving too much and taking that some back for yourself. So different events for each one. That was our most recent, and it was brilliantly successful. And so you've grown this group, obviously, and uh, what are some of the things that you're hearing from the women about how they feel better about themselves and more empowered, and maybe wow. they're being nicer to each other since they become a part of your group? The House of the Goddess Sisterhood is, we're at about... 400 ladies now and for it's not that we have 400 ladies come to each circle but 
our sisterhood is expansive. So as we come there and learn and grow together, we go forth and are to our parents. So the house of God is for all women of all walks of life. And they will talk to the women that are in their life and the men, of course, and say, this is what I learned here. And this is how I feel now. And the feedback has been amazing because it's kept our circle sustained and everyone keeps coming back. And now we all go to movies together and dinners and vacations. And it's just, it's so beautiful. Huh. And to think that you created this and uh, just you and a friend who were trying to to move people into a different energetic space. Sure. Whereas, like you were saying that, and I do see this a lot among women, is this... Uh, that tendency to be really nasty with each other and that it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. I think that mm -hmm. sometimes people need to be brought out of what they see as being the norm. That is not the norm, no. just being mean to each other. Yeah, and so it amazes me when I go into a situation and see a mother being so cruel to her daughter. And this might be in a grocery store, it might be you know, anywhere at a mall, anywhere you go. And it's, it's, it's a weird dynamic to me because the mom is supposed to be that force in the family that's grounding and sensitive and understanding. And when she's vicious with her daughter and, you know, puts restrictions on her, I, I, don't, I think it's very detrimental to the relationship and for all the people watching. So I think as a woman, it's important to know that you're also a life giver and a nurturer. And that is your role. To, and not even just that, but to fulfill your potential and to own your power. All right, and so you've got, of course, you're making a lot of friends Absolutely. Uh, by doing this, and uh, it's an attractive force because you've got all these positive women who are who are really out there, really doing it, and spreading love with one another. Yes, yes, absolutely. The sisterhood is true sisterhood it's not friends that you have that you know you call and they want to just talk your ear off and then when you want to say something they cut you off and they got to go at that point it's sisters that you could call at three in the morning and they will drive to wherever you're at just to make sure you're okay it's a whole different style of sisters and friendship yeah when we were off the air Mackenzie and I were talking about relationships and how all life really revolves around relationships to some extent and uh Obviously, with some of the work that you're doing, both energetic and creating an empowerment group like this, you're contributing to the improvement of, of relationships on the planet. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that I am a role model for the, those around me. And so that's what, even if it comes to being on your cell phone in public, I always am try my best, unless it's in a situation where I need to be respond to a text message or pick up a phone call. I try my best to have my phone away to, you know, be myself in front of people and move and kind of dance wherever I'm at and just be comfortable because it's a great example for others to do the same. It's so easy to see people on their phones or just locked in, like, you know, crouched down. And why don't you just pick up your head and be a little spunky with yourself so yeah yeah I think people need to be reminded right I mean because it's very easy to fall into patterns in life and we do it from, from young ages it's really simple to just get in a frame of mind I mean they say that a lot of your your thought process is developed by the time you're nine or ten years old wow I didn't know that yeah yeah the majority of your 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 thought patterns are really developed at a very young age and so uh, because we get locked in so quick early in life it takes sometimes outside stimulus I know it has for me at times in my life where it's taken things from the outside which are uh, which can be groups or or exercises like Reiki or just being in around people who bring you out of mm -hmm. your 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 paradigms because we all we've got paradigms uh, that we're carrying around with us and it's not that we necessarily have to have them forever it's just that we have to first be aware and then if we want to change them we have to be usually willing to partner with other people to do that because mm -hmm. it's it's challenging to bring yourself out of your uh, out of a paradigm Absolutely, and I don't think that you can do everything on your own. When it comes to healing and growing within, you need to find your people, find your tribe, and be the energy that you want around you, and give that to others. And it is true that you are who you hang out with, so 
holding yourself accountable for your friends. And that's something that you're very aware of, obviously, sure. is that you, you make friends with, with certain types of people and you keep the, of course, everyone matters in the world. And just because a person isn't necessarily positive or on our energetic, um, in our energetic space does not mean that they have less value. But for the sure. most part, like you said, the people that we have around us really reflect our energy. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, and we were talking about mothers, and a, a couple of seconds ago, you were talking about the nurturing spirit of uh, of women, and what, Mother's Day is coming up. What are your thoughts about the celebration of that and <laughs> and its value? So, I mentioned earlier that I'm becoming a yoga instructor, and this weekend I actually have my second to last weekend of yoga training. So it's all day on Mother's Day. I'm very disappointed about that, but I'm going to make sure that I spend time with my mom. Even if training ends at around 6:30, I'm going to go home and just be with her. I don't think it's necessarily about gifts and chocolates and teddy bears. It's spending quality time with your mom and letting her, proving to her with your presence and with your actions of being there that she matters to you and you love her and this empowerment that you've been working on with these other women has it affected your relationship with your own mother absolutely this empowerment that this whole endeavor the house of the goddess has expanded my relationship with every woman on the planet i see them i see every woman as a sister and specifically my mom we've always have had challenges because you know we have that mother-daughter thing always but as I've become a leader for women I take it on myself that when she might say something that I don't agree with it's my choice how I react and she's human too and we're all good we're moving through it together right and in terms of the empowerment of women how does that work in helping to empower relationships between men and women because I think that empowerment does begin uh, empowerment does begin at home you obviously yeah. you if you're not empowered it's very difficult for you to have an empowering relationship with anyone else sure. so in terms of women who seek to have better relationships with men do you see a connection between that with the work that you're doing to help them empower themselves I think a lot of women go for the bad oh, well at least in my age group they go for the bad guy or the guy that stimulates them doesn't text back and I, being one of those girls that used to be like that, see how it's it affected me as I got older, and I started to, my standards with men would, you know, if they wouldn't text me back, it, like, was a turn on for me. I, like, found that attractive, and as I've grown the past couple years, I don't take any BS from men, right? I know my power and my worth, and if they're not giving me that support and that appreciation that I deserve, then they're not in my life, because I do that for them. I want to see them grow, and... It has to be mutual. And I think that if you believe in yourself and in your power, you deserve to have a partner that believes in you as well. And you appear to be a woman, well, you don't appear to be, you're sharing your journey uh, of, of purpose, that you, you have a real purpose and direction that you're going in in your life. What are your audacious dreams? Do you have an audacious dream that you would like to share uh, with the audience? Because you're, you're 20 years old, you've got a lot of living to do, and what audacious experience or, or contribution do you want to make to the world? There is so many. I believe that the house of the goddess could go in any direction, and I see it maybe becoming an ashram somewhere tropical. I don't know where exactly yet. I haven't put two, all the little details together, but making a sanctuary for women to come in with different teachers, meditation teachers, yoga teachers, everything you can imagine at this house for specifically women and you would come there in a retreat, learn, and take that into the world. And the house of goddess can actually become a house of the goddess and people can live there for as long as they want and it can be sustained with plant-based foods and somewhere where we're disconnected from technology and the cities and we can be with one another and celebrate life together. Wow, that is a pretty audacious goal that you have there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> my heart's desire truest and we've talked about the fact that we're we're in toastmasters together and you are growing as a as a public speaker and what part of your personal development does that fulfill i want to not only be an empower, empower woman but empower people to fulfill their greatest potential 
so Toastmasters, you never know who will be in your audience. And I found in a lot of my speeches that I wouldn't have expected to impact people, I've gotten some incredible feedback. And Toastmasters has helped me become confident with my voice and trusting that it will it will make a difference in others' lives. And I think that's where I've grown and found such a benefit from Toastmasters is becoming comfortable in my own skin and the woman that I am. Mm-hmm. And speaking of wonderful women, Mackenzie's grandmother has been a member of the Toastmaster Club that I am in since, is it 79? I think it's 1979. Wow. That's how long your, your grandmother, mm-hmm. uh, Lee Horner, has been a member of Toastmasters. She's a wonderful woman and she's really helped me a lot through the years. She really has. Wow. Some of the conversations that I've had with your grandmother have been extremely empowering. And I can see where you have a lot of genetics that really have, uh, are contributing to your ability to be able to be on the course that you're on. Sure. If it wasn't for my grandmother, I wouldn't be at Toastmasters. Like you said, she's been in Toastmasters for 40 years. And she's been trying to... She actually pulled me to... Dragged me to a Toastmasters meeting when I was, I think third or fourth grade and I didn't even know what was happening in there. I'm just like, what is this? Why am I here? And then when I graduated high school, I recognized that public speaking is something that you are all going to have to do everywhere. No matter where you're at, you're going to have to connect with people and becoming effective in your communications is imperative. Yes, absolutely. There's no aspect of your life that will not benefit from you becoming a better communicator, a better listener. and. Other than the fact that, of course, you're out here and you're pushing your business and you're doing public speaking, uh, is there another aspect of life that you found a great benefit in since you've uh, joined Toastmasters and have worked so much on, on communication? I think, you know, it really goes back to yoga because I find that in Toastmasters, in my Reiki healing business, in my women's empowerment, those are all sustained for me physically, spiritually, and mentally. But yoga is all three of those combined. So as I've deepened my practice, it's created a lot of space within myself to bring my best to my other endeavors. So that's where I feel, and because I've really deepened my yoga practice in these past six months. Beforehand, it was just maybe once a week, twice a week thing, and now it's every day. So definitely yoga. Oh, you do yoga every day? Oh, I have to. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. And when you're becoming a teacher, you have to know what you're doing, especially when you're going to teach others. You have to feel it in your own body. And that's, so I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is get in downward facing dog. (laughs) Oh, really? That's how you start your day. That's how I start my day. And then I do my gratitude practice, which yoga is gratitude, but I do writing as well after my yoga. Mm Mm-hmm. When a person comes to you and maybe they're they're not in a good energetic space, of course, because a lot of people are suffering out there, sure. as we've talked about over the uh, the course of the interviews that we've done today. How do you start to move them to a higher energetic level? Is there one thing that you do to try to lift them from the beginning? Eye contact. Looking at someone with sincerity and acceptance, eyes of love and kind of seeing them for you know where they're at and not getting reactive to how they might act towards you but understanding them and being okay with it and asking them questions like how are you and genuinely wanting to know their answer and letting them answer however they may and giving them some time after they answer to feel what they say before you respond and answer mm-hmm. it's so important so that's the, if i can recommend anything to helping people when you see someone in a down mood is looking at them and genuinely asking them how they are. And huh. Letting them respond. That's a really simple thing. So simple. And very effective, yes. I agree. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Mackenzie, it's been wonderful having you as a guest on the show today. And how can our audience get in contact with you for Reiki, for wellness, or to become a part of your women's empowerment group? Sure. My website is whitelight.guru. White is spelled W H Y T E, light.guru. I also have a Facebook, Mackenzie White, and Twitter, Mackenzie White, and an Instagram. I think it's White Goddess. So contact me there if you're interested in any of my endeavors and passions. 
All right. Thank you again for stopping by. <laughs> thank you very much for having me. And thank all of you for tuning into this week's edition of uh, The Guy Dawson Show. Please go to our YouTube page uh, to check out past archives and visit the website for our, uh, my company, ClassicCommunications.net. And take care of yourselves, and we'll see you next week.